great to meet you guys. If you are the first time here, raise your hand if this is going to be your first summer. Fire, I want to see you. If you don't know me yet, uh, my name is and um, and I'm your I'm your host today. There's so much energy in the room. <laughs>
is on time. <laughs> My miniature layer is on time. On time is late, then if you're late, that's unacceptable. We, we close the door, we start, you know, we, we, we start on time. I can promise that next time. Number two. What is this now? All right, is take notes. And I'm, I'm really not talking about this, you know, <laughs> like, like during the university, there are you know, the slides and, and there are some things written on the slides. And, and I, writing everything down, but like brother, like listen to the speakers and listen to their stories and you have some ideas, put those ideas in the paper. And my suggestion is take those note facts to the America and this is something you go over, you know, in the evenings we have reading schedule even for that. So making sure the more you kind of dive into and the more you put down, the more you remember as well. Number three, ask questions. This is very, very unusual for Estonians, I think. You come here and you're quiet and you're like almost you know, in the funeral, funeral. But uh, very often, since, since we have, you know, the meeting, I'll and tie it, stuff, I'll uh, tie it. Thank you. Uh, uh, you might not have enough time to ask questions from me or the speakers, but make sure you, you should have a couple of questions running through your head you know, throughout the parts, write those down. And next time you go and sit down with your mentor, make sure you ask those. I don't think there are any stupid questions you can ask. You know, the more you ask, the more you understand, and, you know, the concepts and the success principles. I didn't ask questions. I didn't get that until, you know, first day hit me, like a train. Number four. Uh, we don't have any practices today. But towards spring, we're going to have a part of the meeting when, where we, we're going to practice as well to become better technically. What to say, when to say, how to, you know, body language and everything. So make sure you maximize those times. Because, uh, you know, the, the more you practice, the better you get. And either, you know, everybody, like I saw that some hands, if everybody wants to be in you know, the top first year, some of you won't, won't be. That's, that's the fact. And you can either, you know, uh, get the advantage towards, you know, compared to others or disadvantage. So the more you practice, the more confident you become, the better you become, uh, the easier it is to, to, to go and, and go to the summer as well. And then number five, it's maybe the hardest for Estonians, but get to know each other. I bet that if you're, you know, first time here, you maybe know two people. You know, your mentor who recorded you, maybe somebody else sat down with you. But just, you know, no. sat, sit, sit down, you know, next to the people you don't know. And if you could self, ask about them uh, when you practice time, try to approach people you don't know. I know it's hard and it's out of comfort. So that's, you, that's why you're here, right? Phone call. Hopefully. Message. You know, to, to widen your, your comfort zone. But the more people you know, uh, you know, during the summer there are those rankings and the pictures and everything. The more people you know, it's the competition gonna be much, much more interesting. And the more interesting your competition gonna be, most likely you do better as well. And number six, the bonus. I don't have it. It's there. <laughs> but just the bonus is, uh, even you know, we 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 start from the easy ones. We go to more advanced. Number six is uh, be enthusiastic. This is something you, if you're Estonian, you don't know what it means, enthusiastic. It means you, you show your emotions. You know. Nikita, how you show, you know. And the speaker is on the smart thing. How do you say, do that? No. Right now? Yes. <laughs> how do you do? Why? <laughs> so you, how do you say, enthusiastic? On the smart thing is coming up. How do you do? On the smart thing coming up? <laughs> <laughs> Clone it. Anyway, so, uh, so the first speaker we're gonna start off with is uh, one of the crocodiles in, in Estonia, a crocodile. He's older than me. So I remember when I was the first year at those meetings. Uh, his, his actually parts were, were the best ones. I like those the most because I think he had the most to share and the most experience. Uh, he's coming from uh, Tartu. So he traveled uh, two hours to get here and share some ideas. But um, Andres was pretty much the part of the first big, uh, big team that was recruited or put together uh, from Estonia. 
So his mentor was uh, Ellen Kumber, who was from England, actually. And um, he did well. He, he hit Sizzler his first summer, came back. He actually has hit Sizzler every single, single year he's been in the same post. And uh, he's been a top, uh, a top uh, producer. Mm, not only he has you know, good results in sales, in his best week is more public club, if you know, don't know what that means, is a thousand units a week. How much is uh, first year Sizzler? Any, like, any, anybody that's a first year? Who knows? How many units is Sizzler? 1,200, exactly, 1,200. So one week, th over 1,000 is pretty really good, actually. Um, but uh, on top of that, he's pretty good in, in recruiting and uh, putting the team together and, and uh, putting a, a good pro pro productive teams together. So after four years, he was promoted to sales leader um, with Southwestern. And in Estonia, in Southwestern history, he's the, he's the first district sales leader. Um, so from actually not even Estonia, but the uh, whole Eastern Europe. And uh, he's married to a former booker, Kento. They have uh, three kids. And uh, when he's not selling books or coaching people to sell books, he likes reading, investing, and traveling. Andres. Congrats. Wow. Mm -hmm. Cool. This was a really good preview for the summer as well, because in the summer you have Sunday meetings, if you haven't heard. And then often in a Sunday meeting, alumni will come to speak. And the OWL gives alumni five or ten minutes and a topic. And there's going to be a cool guy like Mark, and he usually goes 50 minutes and way random things as well. So Mark was actually supposed to introduce me, but he added his own long part and took half of my time. So we'll go a little bit over today. But uh, uh, my part is history and getting ready for a great summer. So I'll share three simple things. You don't have to write down much. But I'll, before that, I'll talk a little bit about the history as well. Uh, who knows uh, what is Southwestern's mission? What is our mission statement? Managers, to be the best organization in the world at helping young people develop the skills and character they need to achieve their goals in life. So this is our mission. And the first award you can win this summer is a success coin. So I put this on because first impressions are important. And if you win this, you're going to do well in the summertime. So most of the things Mark talked about, I will talk about, I will talk about, and then Dan will talk about, you'll forget. If you just remember this, like look at me, <laughs> then uh, you'll do well, because you want to win this. This is the first award for the first two weeks. And how can you win it? Who knows? What do you have to do? You have to do a number of something. 30 demos. You have to do 30 demos a day during those first uh, two weeks. And if you do that, you're going to win. So remember this. This is the prize. Uh, we'll talk about work hard, study hard, be teachable, as I said. But let's go back. So Southwestern was started 1855, a long time ago, uh, before the light bulb, before the Estonian uh, Song Festival. So it's pretty, pretty old company. Um, and it was started at the time of civil war. And so the company was just a printing house, printing small Bibles, mostly. And then after the Civil War, the economy in the South wasn't doing so well. It, well there was poverty, and especially the South kind of, it was sucking there. Then this guy, Reverend Graves, who started a company in 1855, in 1868, he had some guys who went around and started selling these Bibles. So this was the first time that the modern Southwestern, so to be, or the Southwestern experience started when some guys went around and started selling Bibles from farm to farm, pretty much, um, not so much door to door as you saw from that previous picture. And then uh, this is kind of how it looked like back then. Nowadays, we don't have so fancy clothes or hats anymore. We don't even have long trousers or uh, horse and buggy, cool ones. So here you can see a first year and a manager. How can you tell a difference between a first year and a manager? Manager has the horse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> first year has the legs. But so the program grew. There were lots of people uh, participating until the world wars. So there was a draft. A lot of the young men went to the army to fight overseas as well. 
and then Southwestern was shut down, pretty much shut down. So after the war, the two sales managers got back together and they said, hey, let's get this thing going again. So they took a big old map of United States, they took the Mississippi River, and one guy was supposed to take the left side, and the other guy was supposed to take the right side. And then they went to recruit those people who sold before. Now this was a couple of years before Facebook or phones, so it just meant going around, going to towns, going by addresses, finding the people, writing to them as well, who'd sold books to get it started. And in fact, after that, the company had really, really good growth. Uh, so much so that in 1968, it was sold to Times Mirror Corporation. So the owners of the company at that time, they wanted to cash out. They sold the corporation and this big company came in. They had uh, assets in different businesses as well. And then um, they kind of started to be owners of Southwestern, made some changes as well. Now, one of Southwestern's leaders at that time was Spencer Hayes. And in 73, he and a couple other people put up all the money they had, borrowed some more, and they bought Southwestern back. So it was a risky move, because at that time, interest rates were very high. So he was paying something over 10, 14% on interest on the borrowed money. Plus, he had, you know, they had uh, put everything they had in with some of the leaders. But it worked out really well. Spencer passed away some years ago, but he was really rich. Uh, Ranol and um, uh, me, we had a chance to go to uh, Paris, uh, where Spencer, just a couple of years before he died, he donated his art collection worth like 360 million euros or so to the French government. And so Spencer done pretty well because he just didn't put all of his money into art and he didn't give all of it away. Uh, so Spencer started several other companies as well. And then uh, people from Europe, all the time everybody was selling. Uh, people from Europe started selling in 87. They actually had people selling in Canada and UK. And then when the Berlin Wall came down at this time, there was a young guy from, uh, from Tallinn who happened to sell books. Who knows who this is? This is Pep Fine, known from Dancing with the Stars in Estonia, also known by some books and sales trainings and an investor uh, in Pipedrive. So Pep, this was just very random. A guy in EB, uh, EBS um, uh, rector or whoever he was, the owner, was sitting next to somebody uh, somewhere and this somebody was a sales manager in Southwestern and was talking, I, you know, I'm always recruiting people. And then Pep was shipped over in very weird yellow shorts to America <laughs> to sell books. And Pep also went to school in America. He sold uh, four or five summers, but couldn't get the visa after that. Uh, and then he stayed in Estonia, made his own. Uh, at first, he worked at some companies, copied as much as he could from Southwestern down to the awards given and things like that for work, and then started his own sales training company, Vine and Partnerit. Vine and Partnerit. And then uh, he did pretty well with that until he just you know, got bored, fed up, uh, started writing some books and stuff, whatever. And now the people who he worked with, they started Pipe Drive, and he was their first and main investor, so now he's like, okay. Uh, he just writes books and plays the trombone and piano for fun and uh, goes to his um, you know, house in the country, and he's good. So the guy, in 2000, there was a guy, Timo Rein, who is the CEO, I guess, of Pipe Drive now. Timo was like 25 or 26 years old. He worked in Pep's company as a sales trainer, and Pep was like, you have to go to America to sell books because he'd sent a couple of guys before as well. Like, you have to go to America, because although you are working in my company as a sales trainer and we are charging people good money for it, you need to learn things that you don't know by selling books in America. So he was supposed to go for like six or eight weeks, Timo, because he was, his uh, wife was pregnant. They were having the first baby right in spring or in the summer. But Timo went, he enjoyed it so much that he stayed for the full summer, and he did like 3,600 units. However, they decided it. Timo got to work with Europeans, Ellen, that Mark mentioned, and Chris Adams, who was Ellen's boss, the district sales manager. And then, uh, because he did so well, uh, my manager, Ellen, she'd been traveling to Australia before and everywhere. She studied in Oxford University. She decided, you know what? Why don't I just go to Estonia? If everybody there is like Timo, that's pretty sweet. And then uh, that's how the first peak group came from Estonia in year 2001, one year after Timo. There were 12 people. Uh, one was a Latvian and one was a Lithuanian. That's how this, they both were studying in Tallinn, and that's how our group got started. 
And so that's a little bit of history. And now we have about seven, eight hundred people, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, and we have about three hundred also in um, in Czech Republic and Bulgaria and somewhere in Central Europe. Uh, so it's grown real big. Now I'll talk about three things. If you want to write down, you can write those things down on how to have a successful summer. So first is work hard. Who spends a lot of time on Instagram? Yeah, what do you watch, like cat videos or memes or what is it? Influencers? Suna Mudiad? Like how to, how, to, how to pose? I, have, uh, I like to watch like you know, John Maxwell and Gary Vee and those guys. And what I found uh, in my 38 years of age that most people who are successful, they work. Now sometimes it looks like some people don't work or that they are lucky or whatever. Now, you can be lucky a little bit. But if you don't work, that luck is going to evaporate soon. And then, you know, it's not good. But most people, if they are successful, they work. And then that's not clear for everybody. And that's even not clear for everybody in this room, probably. Some people think they are hardworking, but you're not as hardworking as you actually think you are. So work hard. If that's the best lesson you get from Southwestern, it's well worth the thousand hours sweating in America and getting rejected by moms who are five years older than you are, saying you should get a real job in McDonald's. <laughs> so there's three ways you can work hard, physically, mentally, and emotionally. So physically, early to late, start early, finish when it's dark. This is my friend Jaak, or you know, Rahabos, as some of you know him probably. <laughs> so uh, Jaak's uh, first summer uh, on the book field, June 2002, he did 123 calls. What is a call in Southwestern? It's contact with a prospect, somebody you want to sell to, right? So 123 calls in 13 and a half hours, four sit downs. So that's nine calls every hour or one call every uh, seven minutes. There's about 135 or 140 people here, I counted. So imagine like if Jacques' first summer, it's pretty much that he approached everybody, but not in a row nicely, that he approached one, and then he would have to go out to the end of the parking lot and walk back, and then the next one, parking lot and back, and then the next one. And out of those 123, four people sat down with him. Everybody else was like, what? Get out of here. So, but Jaak was number one that summer. He sold about 2,800 units, although he wanted to quit after this first day. <laughs> now, if you want to quit, you don't just do it right away. Like, if you're seeing somebody or if you're married, you don't just break up right away. You give it some time. So what Jaak did, he went to follow. <laughs> it's true. He went to follow his manager, and his manager taught him how he actually should work. So he didn't do 123 calls ever again, but he got more sit-downs and he started selling. So um, Jaak, he won, he was the best one because of this effort that the 123 calls represent. He was sucking really bad, but he still kept going. So work hard like that. This is Albi, Andros Albi. Some of you saw his... Uh, in the video, in the presentation, there's a video where he talks about it, or maybe you got, uh, it was sent to you. He's bald now, so he looks different. Mm. Look at his first week, his first summer. What do you think how many units he sold? <laughs> it's not a trick question. <laughs> so zero. How would you like to sell zero units? You work about 70 hours. You've practiced all spring and some fall. You go out. You tell your friends and your mom, like, it's going to be good. I'll come back with iPhone and everything. <laughs> and then you work almost 10% of your summer, and you have zero. Is that cool? It's cool now when you look back, you know, because three years later, when he looked like this, I'll be sold 1,000 in a week, three summers later. But it wasn't nice in the beginning, so you have to work hard. My first day. I'll go through this fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. And in 2001, $2,600 
um, uh, salary, monthly salary was maybe 400 or 300 dollars, right? So we're talking six, seven months of salary. My parents were a little bit above average salary makers. So what is average salary now? 1400, well, you get like, let's say 1000 something. So eight months would be 8000. Imagine after your first day, you're in the hole 8000, how that feels. Now I was young then, like you, so I was stupid, I didn't care, <laughs> I just kept going. <laughs> so hopefully you are the same. But just remember, you have to work hard and there's gonna be pressure. But it doesn't matter, you have to keep going. So it got better. So these are, these are actual numbers. There's not numbers here, but like the units of three people. Who do you think, which one of them is going to do the best? The left one, the middle one, or the right one? Who thinks left? Who thinks middle? Who thinks right? Why the middle one? More people had hand up in the middle one. You cannot tell. It doesn't matter how much you sell in the beginning. You cannot tell from the units. So how can you tell how somebody is going to do? Hmm? Work. Best work stats lead to best sales. 60, 30, 10. 60, 30, 10. 60, 30, 10. What is it? 60, 30, 10. Yeah. And you know, your student manager will show you some examples. Look, 17 sit downs, 19 sit downs, 17 sit downs, 16 sit downs. So, s small effort brings small results. What brings big results? Big effort. Yeah, and a lot of people say, oh, I want to be rich one day, and you know, like we all want a six pack, right? And we want this and that. But when the time is to go out and kill it and drag it to the cave, a lot of people are not ready. So think, are you ready? Do you want to be number one? Do you want to be the best one? Or do you just want to go through the summer? Say, I've done it. Because a lot of people actually want that. You don't want 3,000 units. You just want that, oh, I did the summer, it was fine. But if you think you do, then you're gonna be all like messed up and stressed. So think through your goals, and if you're ready to pay the price, pay it. And a good recommendation from Karel uh, Kõiv, who works with Euphoria people, is this, divide your summer goals into weekly and daily goals, right? And then think of your summer like in blocks. First goal is to sell like five 500 units. Then another 500, then another 500, another 500. And why it's something like 100 units? It's like a video game. What happens when you die? You know, respawn, reset, again, try again, try again, try again. But if you have this peak goal of 2,000, and in your fifth week, you have done 500, you could finish with 800 or 1,000, you could finish with 3,000. You don't know. But if you focus on today, 100, 100, 100, or whatever it is, you're going to do better. So break it down and focus on that one thing. Make sense? All right, second, first was work hard. Second is study hard. So what does it mean? Know your sales talks for kids books and for the black books at least. Practice and practice perfectly and take responsibility for it. So there's a couple of slides where I go over this, why it's worth it. But who knows that we have several sister companies. So my wife, Gertu, works in Southwest Consulting. And so this is what they teach. Self-talk. Losing your cool card. Vision board. So maybe as a first year, you haven't seen things like that yet. But managers, this is what we learn and what we teach, right? And so usually this costs like 450 euros or like 900 or 1,000 euros a month. So my wife, for you, it's zero. My wife has customers. She has this one guy who's 60 years old. And last summer, almost every month, this guy hit his best result. He's selling like water purifying systems. And Gertu taught this 60-year-old guy who is successful because he's paying $500 a month for coaching. Gertu taught him how to close because the guy didn't close before. He was selling and talking and, you know, then you're like, so maybe... If you're interested, maybe email or something. You know, however people do it, salespeople in like normal way. But he didn't know how to close. So Gertu was teaching him, okay, you need a close, you need steps, this is what you're gonna do. 
And the guy's like, wow, this is cool. So this is 60 year old man who's worked in sales many years and he doesn't know it. You will learn it in like three, four, five meetings. But you know, it's like, if you don't even know how good it is, you're gonna be like, oh, okay. Well, I guess everybody learns it like that. That's not the case. So even if you don't wanna be in sales, it's really good to understand how it works. But I've seen it before. People don't even understand how much they learn in Southwestern because you do so much practice and everything. So learn, it's good for you. And there's a lot, uh, lot to learn. So some of you are like, okay, I'll just try this, see how it goes, one summer deal. I was like, I wanna do this as long as I can, if possible, because it was really cool. I liked going to America, I liked making money, I liked the challenge, people and everything. So there is a lot to learn. You can be a first year, some of you can become managers, then a great level is to be org leader, then become a sales leader. Where are my sales leaders at? Hands up, yeah. Uh, where are my OLs at, org leaders, who were all last year? Mm -hmm. And then district sales leader. So the reason I like this is, and some of the people, it might click with this, let's say you're like a first year, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna graduate school, in like four or five years, <laughs> three years, whatever it is, that was a joke. And then, uh, <laughs> so what people do nowadays a lot is, they'll try one thing, and another thing, and another thing, and another thing, and they'll get a little bit of experience in different things, but they never get really good at something. So the way I was thinking about it, if I try sales, I want to become good at it. I want to learn. And Southwestern gives that opportunity. You build on the foundation that you have. So learn well. Uh, we'll skip this in the interest of time. You can play Mark. And then the third, so work hard, study hard, be teachable. So when your manager says, jump, what should you do? Jump. Yeah, jump or ask how high, just like Anor here. Now, it sounds maybe a little bit like cultish or like, no, but I'm an individual, you know, I'm a millennial. <laughs> like, and I understand it. You should be skeptical, generally speaking, right? But let's say you wanna go and become, you know, a black belt in karate. Right? Somebody has a, any belt in karate? All right. So if you want to have a, you know, let's say first, you know, even like a yellow belt or whatever. If you want that, do you go into every training with your sensei or trainer, however you want to call, and think like, let me see what I will use this time of what you say. Or once you go and you commit to that place, the group, the sensei, you're open-minded and you listen to everything they have to say. Like if you're in, be in 100% and listen to advices. Because your student manager isn't just like making a social experiment to see what fun things he can make you to do, <laughs> right? So managers have competition for teams, just as you have competition for sales. They get paid if you sell. If you sell, it's zero, right? So they want you to do well. And there's also the value of like seeing somebody grow and do well and the pride. I. That's my team, that's my team members. So managers want you to do well, and they have done it before. And our company is 160 years old. We know what works, even if some of it doesn't make sense. And here's the kicker. Sometimes the manager teaching you this, they don't know why it works. Ronald knows, I know, Mark knows, other DSLs know, but the manager might not know. So if you're like, well, why is, why is it so? And the manager can't tell you, you're like, okay, I'm not gonna use that thing. I'm not gonna read this book, mm, whatever. <laughs> You just take a little bit away from your success and then a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and then you'll be like Metzla. Don't be like Metzla. Be like Rano. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mark's a good friend so he knows I'm joking. But be teachable. Be open-minded. <laughs> I lived with my brother when he was his first summer and we had this big trust obviously because he'd seen me for five summers go and sell books successfully. He knew I was hard working and everything. So when I told him something, he did it. Like one small example was one week we were talking that, hey, you need to put all kinds of positive signs up in your HQ and everywhere. And then they went home with the roommates. I came a little bit later. So he took the charge. So they'd written up some motivational like um, 
things on paper. They took some papers that we had, we printed, and then he put them in his car. He had a car his first summer. And then the, the other roommates, they put them, taped them on his bike and stuff. And he was the one leading it, right? So it's, it's not only that your manager says something like specifically do it, but if a manager says, hey, positive affirmations are good, you know, self-talk is good, you should be thinking, okay, how can I use this? Not just like thinking whenever they specifically say. So this is what being teachable and being open-minded means. Be proactive, be flexible, have a winner mentality. And this basically means have a growth mindset. Don't be whining. Don't be saying, oh, I don't know, I can't. Be okay to fail. Be ready to fail. And I'm not lecturing. Like, this is not for everybody. And if at any point during the training you feel like, oh, I don't understand, and you feel your manager like maybe doesn't feel you or whatever, try to talk to your DSL as well. They'll maybe give you some more insights. But if you listen to the advices, you are going to do well. All right. And it's worth it. For the customers, you're going to meet so many cool families. For the travels, cool places you can go. Now, first summer, you can only go to America, then the Sizzler, which this year is in Egypt. And then, if you're really good, Vip Trip, which is somewhere like, you know, um, what was it last year? Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, uh, then it was Mauritius, and other cool places. But for those who stick around for longer, I think, you know, me and Ranol and then Mark, we've probably been on paid trips like uh, 18 or 16 months out of our year, uh, out of our life already. So it's cool. And you win a bunch of prizes. Check out the cool hair <laughs> cuts of 2004. <laughs> and it's going to be fun. So it's like everything else. You get what you put in. If you put in a lot, you will get a lot. If you're like, eh, 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 I'll see, you don't get as much. And it's OK. That's going to be your summer. But the more people work hard, study hard, and are teachable, the more competition there's going to be. The more we push each other up and have better results. But just think through, are you really ready to be number one? Do you want to be number one or not? And if you are, just go nuts. Prepare as well as you can. Increase your comfort zone, study hard, be teachable, and it's going to be the best summer you've had. It's going to be probably the best summer anyway, but if you sell a lot, it's going to be a lot cooler as well. Bonus, like Metzler said, we always give you bonus material. Um, practice situational cycles. So this is more for the spring, but uh, I'll just give it here. Meaning practice with real situations. Don't just do like dry, stupid practice. Try to have all the names and tablets and everything. If you're going to have a tablet, try to have it ready already. Get fit and stop stupid habits. So what are stupid habits? Smoking is a stupid habit. If you smoke in the States, if you smoke here, well, first, anyway, stop it. It's stupid. But if you smoke in the States, you're taking 500 or 1,000 units off your summer easily because it's expensive. People can smell it. And you're going to be thinking much more because it's stressful so much in the beginning. So stop it now because you know, you're not going to be like, oh, yeah, I can stop any time. I'll stop the 1st of June. Yeah, right? Um, and then start the habits that are useful already now. So how many people read every day? That's awesome. How many first years read every day? That's less awesome, but still good. <laughs> so have you heard the saying, leaders are readers? You want to have a habit of reading. Because you're in college. And if you don't read every day, when you graduate, there's no way in hell you're going to read every day. Do you know how much average Estonian watches TV? How many hours? Four and a half. This is like a legit stat. Google it if you don't believe it. Or TikTok. You know? <laughs> but uh, it's crazy. So make that habit now. If you have a habit of reading every day, you are going to be more successful 20 years from now. And also like self-talk and planning your things. So practice situation cycles, get fit, and stop doing stupid things. And then what was this? Success coin. What should you do with it? Win it. Win it. Win it. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, we have one more uh, guest uh, speaker uh, tonight. Don't be like me. Oh, nice. I, I did about 1500 units, he did about 18. <coughs> the next guy did his first summer about 2000 units, and he had the best start that he did. He's been with us four years in the business, he's open to it. And uh, he's actually. Uh,
Uh, as a youngest uh, in Europe, one history at least, to uh, <coughs> be the state minister after the second time. And those three, three years, he came out of the social school, the social schools, and the business schools, some of them were great sense person. Uh, two years ago, he had the uh, number two team in the world. <coughs> so he's not the only one that saves, but also those people do save. And then, uh, how much did you sell this year for summer? Uh, a like yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You can see it. There's more club. <laughs> it's it's two <laughs> times, two times over a thousand units. Then. All right, oh, all right, oh. How are you guys doing? Good. <laughs> Fantastic, right? All right, I talk about, no, 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 no. All right, uh, I talk about goals. Some people have a goal here? Yes. yes. Right, when we were young, uh, I remember my, uh, my days when I was a uh, teeny tiny one, uh, I have uh, like a lot of goals. Uh, every day I have a bunch of them, like uh, I would like to uh, pick up some sticks and rocks throwing, uh, like uh, throwing uh, different rocks and that kind of stuff. And my mom all the time said, no, no, Dean, no, don't do it, no, no, no. Ronald knows exactly how does it work, right? A bunch of you who have uh, kids uh, know how does it work. So we, we, we pretty much growing up that way when, uh, when your parents and friends and everybody telling you not to do it. No, don't do it. Don't go there. No, 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 no. And when we're getting older, we forget those goals, pretty much. That was my part. Thank you. Enjoy the summer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Actually, actually, now it's time to say yes more about the goals, what you want to achieve in your life. Uh, that's why you're here. I'm proud about you guys. I think it's going to be an epic summer, definitely. So we're getting older all the time. I was looking at those pictures about the Mark and uh, Ranal and everybody else. I was thinking, these guys never getting older, but uh, most of the people getting older. Uh, and we're growing, we're getting stronger all the time. We're getting stronger, getting older. Uh, we should be smarter. And we're ending up the uh, reversal way, be, being uh, weaker again, teeny tiny ones, and the uh, Creepy ones, right? <laughs> but we have like a, like, a, like a couple of years, not a couple of years, we can tell like 20, 30 years to achieve our goals pretty much, right? So we should start right away. I have a really good plan how to set really good goals. So write it down so my, uh, much uh, information you can pretty much. But I would like to ask before, what do you want to do? What do you want to do in your life? It's so much easier. Sometimes we think about Working for somebody or working for yourself, right? That is the main goal, pretty much what you're asking right now yourself. I would like to work for somebody or I would like to working myself. <coughs> and where it's usually coming from, from our friends, our parents. If, for example, all my friends are like working eight hours per day um, in Delia, for example, uh, working as an IT programmer or something, then probably I will ending up uh, being a like a eight hour person guy, right? <laughs> Understand, right? But if <laughs> but if you if your all your friends are like entrepreneurs, then you ending up uh, being a entrepreneur. So you should ask yourself: you, Would you like to really like work like eight hours like the next twenty years, or not? You can write those down, those, those uh, not those questions, but those answers. And if you're moving on, some, sometimes we don't know what we want because we don't know other opportunities. I was working in a radio station four and a half years, uh, being uh, like a live presenter. Every morning I was doing like, the Romicus Kellans on Kaiks, Gonvivaneli, Munanihamel, Derry, Today I get a mood, Kurano Gazeli on the Romicus Minogos. Every morning the same story, pretty much. <laughs> right? But I was working there like four and a half years and I didn't know those other opportunities. And I don't know what I want to achieve. I was thinking it's the best job. 
in the world. I was working four hours, I was making decent money, but I didn't know that other opportunities, opportunities what we have. So that's why we don't know those goals what we have in life. Makes sense. I hope it's, I know it's analytical part. So <laughs> sometimes getting uh, tough. And for example, my parents right now, the car situation. I was asking mom and dad one day, they told me that, oh, we bought a, bought a, new, bought a new car. I was like, oh, nice, which car you uh, bought it then? And I give you an exercise now. M my dad uh, had been driving with the Ford Mondeo, like different Ford Mondeos <laughs> over 20 years. My mom was driving with uh, Ford, I think like uh, 15 years and la last three years with the Citroen. So which car they bought it? Ford, of course, Ford Focus, new Ford Focus. I was asking mom and dad, who's buying those Ford Focus these days, right? Old people do, do those, <laughs> buying those cars, right? But I was, I was thinking, and I was asking, so which, which kind of cars you mm, tried out at least? Which kind of test, test cars or test rides you did it? And they, they answered me like, oh, we went to the, uh, we did one with the Ford Focus, and another one with the Volkswagen. And, uh, and dad was thinking Ford is so much better. I was like, of course, and like <laughs> next, <laughs> last 20 years, he was trying with the, he knows all those buttons and everything. Of course, Ford is better. But uh, actually we don't know our goals or what we actually want because we don't know those other opportunities. They never tried out uh, good Audis or good uh, whatever cars we have. Uh, <laughs> some other cars at least. <laughs> <laughs> but forward, go forward, right? Uh, and you should ask yourself, you want to work like uh, three months or like uh, 11 months? Why 11 months? Because we have a Christmas coming up and like a regular people uh, just uh, have a, like a holiday couple of weeks during the year. So 11 months pretty much they're working all the time. And now it's the part where you're going to write it down uh, two, three things what you want to achieve in your life or easier, not thinking so much ahead, uh, you can just write down what you want to achieve in, in next, uh, next year. All right, later on you can uh, first you send it to, the, uh, to your manager also, then they can really look uh, uh, what you want to achieve in next year, for example, in your life, and uh, do you really listen to me or not? It's the best. So what is the dream and goals? Uh, let's talk about it. We talk about so, so often about the dreams and goals. Uh, uh, what is a dream? Dream is a succession of images, thoughts, and or emotions passing through the mind. So it's like a different things all the time uh, uh, going through. And the goal is a projected state of, uh, of affairs that uh, a person or a system plans or intends to achieve. So the main point is their planning uh, about the goal. Let's make it easier. It's so analytical. Goals are something you, uh, you are acting on. Dreams are something uh, you are just thinking about it. For, exa for example, the day. Our go my, my goal was today coming here in a first year meeting doing that power presentation and that part. So I'm right now here, so I'm acting on it. So it's my goal. But the dream can be whatever, right? I can dream whatever I want. Uh, dreams are free, goals have a cost. As a student, most of the time, the cost is time, timely, time or money. Uh, older, older you get, it's knowledge as well. But most of the time you have a, like, a, uh, if I want to go to the Las Vegas, my goal is going to Las Vegas, then I have to take the time as a week going to Las Vegas. It costs like a 2,000 bucks, for example, and I have to be there, then it's, then it's goal. Makes sense probably, right? Easy. Okay. Goal have a finish line. Dreams never have to end. I can dream whatever and never, never ending. But goals all the time have to end. Let's make it easier. My... My, my, that is my Breatik, my uh, brother. I always like to make an example from uh, 
him because uh, he's a good example in life uh, for me. Uh, he, he's, he has been playing for Estonian national team like uh, 60, 60 games or something. Um, he's pretty good. Uh, has been injured last half and uh, like a, a year pretty much. Uh, now he's coming back, back getting, getting better. But uh, Christmas, uh, Christmas is coming right now. I remember like a couple of years ago, not a couple, five, six, even seven years ago, was that kind of situation. Christmas morning, I was waking up. I was uh, sleeping in the same room uh, with him. I was waking up and uh, looking, uh, I was looking what he's doing. And he was doing all the time push-ups, all the time doing push-ups. And then I was, I was like, okay. <laughs> I tried to sleep again and he was all the time like, oh, <laughs> in Estonian, <laughs> I was like, holy shit balls, mom. It's a Christmas morning, right? Take it easy. You don't need to do like workouts and that kind of stuff. Christmas morning, come on. You, you need to eat like heavy, heavy food all the time, having fun, that kind of stuff. Not do the workouts. And he was telling me like, Mm, no, then you don't understand it at all. Uh, I need to do like a 500 push-ups and 500 sit-ups every day because my my coach don't care about the Christmas at, at all. He need to go back. He was playing in Sweden, one of the clubs, and uh, he was saying to me like, that my goal is going back and I have to be really good that uh, a coach can uh, put me in the startup line pretty much. And then I understand like, okay, that is a goal. You're working all the time for a goal to achieve something, right? And I was, I was sleeping, pretty much. <laughs> but uh, goals with the planet vision, let's start about it. Uh, how, how is it, uh, uh, what is a goal and how to set up the goal? We're using like a smart goals. Uh, smart is a formula. How to use it, like uh, there's a different ways how to set up the goals, but uh, easier is just using uh, smart goals. Mm, it have to be sp specific. You should write it out the clearer. Uh, goal, it have to be measurable, ability to track your progress, right? Achievable, uh, set challenging, right? Uh, relevant and timely. So make it as a first here, then you understand. Smart goal for the summer is, I want to sell like uh, 12,000 units or doing a 180 demos per week, for example. I want to hit the Sisler, right? It's really specific. I write it out like a 12, like a, um, 1,200 units. How I measure it? Every week, how much I sell? Or for the demos, uh, how many demos I do per week? Make sense? Uh, achievable, I know a lot of students have been done it. A lot of students like uh, have been done it, right? Everybody, like 200 of them, uh, every, every year pretty much winning it. I know it's uh, achievable. Uh, and ma also manager have to promise you that you, it is doable. Uh, relevant. It have to go to get together with your, your life plans. Pretty much if you want to be like uh, financially free, then it's, it's good to start with like a 1200, for example, units. Next year, I would like to invest money. It's going together with my life plan. So it's uh, relevant. And time, time wise is like after three months, I can, I can tell I was selling 1200 units or not or after a week for the demos. So the harder thing is <laughs> stick with your plan. Even if you put it there like a 1200 units there or like a 2000 units, whatever you do, there's a lot of things going on, like a influence. Like you, you should have like a no matter what attitude, whatever you do, no matter what, I do it, I do it, I do it all the time. Because there's a lot of friends who want to party, right? Going to the parties and everything. But uh, if you want to get something, you have to give something. And right now, what you can give it is your time, right? So uh, me, as a first year, I promised my manager that every time uh, 10 to 11, I'm learning sales talk. Then every day, 10 to 11, I was prom promising. And I was living together with the two guys who want to party. And all the time, like at 10 o'clock in the evening, they start watching movie. They make it so hard, right? But I promised myself and I promised uh, to my manager because I want to be uh, like the best and I want to do well in that business. So every, every evening, 
Uh, my friends even uh, make a joke about me. Oh, you're going to the another room and talk yourself, right? <laughs> I was like, yeah. All the time, they're making that, uh, the same, uh, same joke over and over. Uh, but now I'm here. They're not. <laughs> right. But uh, parents, pa a lot of time parents ask you to help something. Oh, can you do that one? Can you do that one? You should uh, not tell your parents, no, I don't do it. But I can do it a little bit later because my goal is to uh, practice sales talk, for example. I do it that way. If I visited my, visiting my parents, then I always tell them, like, I have uh, things to do. But after that, I can do it. Makes sense. Mm, emotions, lot of things, a lot of things to do, right? A lot of things to do. We have a lot of uh, emotions going on, and we have like, a lot of things to do all the time. Like all the students telling, I'm so busy right now. <laughs> like, uh, I know. Have been student, even sitting in that room. Um, but these are our emotions. Your goals should be bigger than your emotions. And always do and stick with your plan. And procrastination, schools, school and hobbies, right? You have like a lot of, lot of things what you need to do at home, the schoolwork and everything else, uh, even hobbies, uh, I need to go there. But if you have a goal to do well in the Southwestern, you should calculate it, what is bigger, your hobby or your goal to do well here. I think uh, that is the key. Who's that? Jordan. Yeah, Michael Jordan. Michael, uh, I think like a lot of, uh, we have like a lot of sportsmen uh, who are really good uh, to talk about it, but I was thinking about him because he was super tiny actually. Uh, he was in the, going to the high school, ni ninth, ninth grade, and uh, his coach was telling, you're so tiny and uh, small, you can't be like a basketball player pretty much. And how he ended up? Pretty well, right? So stick with your plan and thank you.